Hi, everybody. Give me just a second. I've had a couple of unexpected little things happen, so I'm still preparing just a little bit. So we'll let people hop on, say hi, and um, we'll start making this Barbie bag. I need to just change my needle and thread real quick and pull up all your comments so I can read and we will get started. So give me a hot second. I haven't decided quite what thread I'm going to use. And we'll get this going. If I can remember my password. Come on. There it is. Hi, guys. All right. Yay. Okay. I've got everybody's comments pulled up. Got a good crowd. Okay. So I embroidered a Barbie panel last week and I am going to sew up a bag and I'm just doing my own pattern. So I just came up with my own measurements, the shape I wanted it to be, what I wanted it to have. It's not very like complex it's pretty simple but i will give you guys all the measurements so you can do one yourself um i mean and i'll tell you how i came up with all the measurements i had help from Brittany and leslie um they were super sweet at helping me come up with i all the measurements i thought i knew what i was doing and they were great people to bounce off of so I haven't sewn one up so we'll see if my measurements actually actually worked <laughs> I don't know I kind of have some like chicken scratches of <laughs> what I did and I will show you all the pieces too okay so what I gotta decide what thread color I'm using we'll figure this out there's Leslie hey 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 Hello, Sue from England. Welcome. Okay, let's do, I'll show you and then we'll pick thread. All right, so I've got, oh, before I get any farther, I wanted to mention on my website right now, I'm doing a sale on all of my number three my number three zipper packs, which are smaller than number five, they're perfect for like zip and goes and wallets um, and smaller, smaller items. But uh, they come in like a neutral pack and this color pack. And I have cute little pulls to go with them. Um, the code is 33 off three, all in caps. You can get 33% off your number three zipper tape and pulls. So just throwing that out there if you needed to stock up on that. All right, so what we're working on. This is the panel I embroidered. It's super cute. Yay, all right, so this is the shape I decided I wanted to do just like a sling crossbody type bag, so that's what we're doing. Um, this panel is nine and a half by seven and a half. And then I just rounded off a cor off the corners with my pattern weights, actually. I put my pattern weight on there and just outlined it and rounded off my corners. Yeah, it looks like a mouse pad. Um, so that is the shape of my bag. Here is my contrasting one that I'm using. This is from one, is this Wonderground? This is Wonderground vinyl. Look how cute that is together. So that'll be my back, all right? And then, so these are nine and a half by seven and a half panels. I have a slip pocket cut for the back and there's a lining to it. The slip pocket is seven and a half by seven and a half. And then I will be like putting it on there and then I will round off the corners for the back slip pocket. And then I have, I stole from the river walk sling so many slings have this top connector i know the mav pack has one kind of like like every type of sling has you could make this shape up yourself too so this is gonna go on the top like that so i have one side interfaced one side not 
And then I'll have a D ring coming out of it up here. All right. And then I have my, these are my other D ring connectors on the bottom. My zipper panel pieces. So these two pieces here are my zipper panel pieces. And this is 17 inches long and two and a half inches wide on this side and one and a half inches wide on this side. All right, so there's my zipper panel, 17 by two and a half, 17 by one and a half. Okay, I'm giving you all the measurements because this is a pattern that I just kind of wrote up. This isn't, this isn't like copyrighted or written out. This is just what I came up with. And then my gusset is 15 and a half by three. Now, I don't know if these measurements are gonna work out like I calculated them in my head. So we'll, we may run into little snafus and issues along the way. So it's, I mean, we're just gonna play along together and <laughs> if we make mistakes, we'll fix them. All right, and so I have all my lining pieces cut out as well. I have my front and back lining pieces. I have two pieces for a zipper pocket. I cut these six and a half by six and a half. And then all my zipper panel and gusset pieces are the same. And this is that bonded um, luxe nylon from Wonderground as well. And then this is the back part of my slip pocket. So we're just gonna experiment have some fun. So I am going to bind the bag. I have my binding here. Um, I'm using this striped webbing from Wonderground. No, Zipper Valley maybe? No. <laughs> Wonderground. And then I'm going to use all rainbow hardware from my website and rainbow zipper tape. I think that's it. Those are all the measurements. I will, um, after the video, I will uh, write down all the measurements in the description. So if you're like, wait, what did she say? You can have it all there ready to go. And now we just need some thread. I think I'm gonna use my favorite hot pink Leslie. It's just one of my favorites, right Leslie? Okay, so let me change my thread real quick. Up here, I'm gonna move the camera in just a little bit more. And let me change my thread. And then we're ready to go. All right. Here we are. Yes, yes. Hot pink Leslie for the win. Let's do it. See, I'm using a broken spool. I'm showing you. They're still usable when they're broken. Our goal this week is putting together scrap packs, and in those scrap packs, we will put our broken spools of thread. It'll be great. Okay. Here we go. I think I already have... A bobbin all made up with hot pink Leslie, so we're good there. All right. And I just changed my needle. Will your industrial thread work on my Juki TL 18 QVP? Yes, it should. Yes, ma'am. Lisa, I am just making up my own little bag today. We're just experimenting. We're seeing if my measurements worked. <laughs> All that kind of good stuff. We may have a bag at the end. We may not. I don't know. It'll be fun to watch, though, hopefully. 
All right. We're good there. Let me get another bobbin rolling while I sew. And then we're ready. If you are using a fourth, out, a fourth inch seam allowance on the zipper panel, you can use the same width as it. So one plus two equals three is what I found out. Okay. Uh, Sonia, have I ever shipped to Belize? I don't believe I have. I don't believe so. All right. All right. I think we're ready to go. Ready to rock and roll, guys. This is weird. I don't have to, like, look at a pattern. I just got to do it. Let's just do it. <laughs> Let's just do this. Bring it down a little bit. Here we go. All right. So put that aside. Let's work on our connectors and then we'll do our slip pocket pieces. All right, let's do it. So these are my connector pieces. And this is gonna have my D-ring on it. So I need to do that first. So my gusset may be a little too small if was she, if her measurements are what we're doing. Cause I did a three inch wide gusset. If that's the case, I'll cut down my zipper panel pieces because I don't need them that wide. But we we shall see. I am going to use a fourth inch seam allowance. Probably on the whole thing. Um, so, yeah. I guess we'll see. Alright, so this is... Oh, you know what? I got the wrong size for these. I need to go grab three fourth inch D-rings. Hey, Missy. <laughs> Can you come here? <laughs> She's like, why are you yelling at me? <laughs> Hi. Nice. Can you go grab me three fourths inch D rings? Just one pack. One pack. A rainbow. Hi. Thank you, ma'am. All right. I think this, I was planning on doing three with this and I only need two, so it's a little bit longer. Is the bar, is Barbie an embroidery design? Yes. Thank you. Um, it is an embroidery design that I did on a video last week and there's a link to it. It's um, an Etsy shop. So go check that out. And I think this is too long now. Probably just needs to be that big. Here we go. I'm not used to coming up with my own patterns, but I have done so many other people's. I'm pretty confident that I can figure this out. Right? Right, guys? Okay, so let's sew those. Top stitch those down. Oh, helps if you turn your machine on. <laughs> Hmm. All right, here we go. Here are my D-rings. <clears throat> Make sure my stitching looks good. Yes. It all looks good. I'm just going to fold this in half. So these were, um, this was six inches total and I'm cutting it in half. 
And that's gonna be my smaller D-rings at the bottom. And then this one is four inches long and this is gonna be my top one. All right. Crossbody, yes, Lisa. We are gonna do a sling, not, not a crossbody, a sling. It's gonna be a sling type bag. All right. And these will be my two bottom ones here. Is this domestic friendly? Um, I'm not sure, because it's just a pattern that I threw together. So it depends probably what materials you're using as always. All right, there's all my D-ring connectors. Now I'm gonna do this top piece here. So this is the top part of my sling. And I took this pattern piece from the Riverwalk sling. It's just the top piece, but you could easily cut out a piece like this. And then I'm gonna slide this down here on the top. I'm gonna leave quite a bit of overhang. Um, and then I'll rivet that on. All right, here we go. So I'm gonna sew down, across, and back up. I think I'm gonna do a 3 8 inch seam allowance on this piece. Yeah, I think I am. All right, here we go. And then I'll trim that down. But I'm not gonna trim this off because I want that extra and then I'll put a rivet in it. All right. Is this all in your head or did you write it out? Lisa, I wrote out the measurements once I came up with it. For the most part, I mean, the bag was in my head. I'm like, this is the shape I want. This is what I want it to be. All right, so there's my top part of my sling. I'm gonna go ahead and top stitch that. Here we go. And this is that butter uh, vinyl from Weft and Warp, this pink stuff. That's what this one is, in case you guys were wondering. And then I'm going to go ahead and just baste it closed down along the bottom here. Perfect. Hi, Sarah. All right. I'm going to go ahead and put a rivet in there. Let me grab my rivet stuff real quick. Um, oh, I finally am using, I screwed my cam press onto my board. Look at that. Let me find a rainbow rivet real quick. Isn't that awesome? This is from Hannah Woodworking. She makes these boards. They've got like places for your dies up here. And then this whole back part is magnetic. So you can just lay, look, even probably these, your rivets even stick to it. See that? 
It's all magnets in the back. So you can put all your other dies back there and they'll stay. It's really, it's really cool. And it's pretty. Yep, Charlie, it sure is. All right, so I'm gonna put a rivet about right there. Through all those layers there. Give it a little extra support up top. And then we'll just press that in. All right, beautiful, nice and secure. Okay. Moving on. Yeah, they're currently sold out, but she is going to be doing more. I'm sure if you message her too saying, hey, I'm interested, I know she'll be doing more. Okay, so here's all my connectors. I'm going to do my back slip pocket and then we will attach the connectors. So here's my back slip pocket. It's just two simple pieces. And I think I found this Be The Rainbow tag for my sewing blurbs. I think I wanna put it right here on the back. Wouldn't that be cute? I'm gonna do that real quick. I'm gonna go a little bit over so it's not completely hanging out. I'm just gonna base that right there first. Cute. I hear my dog's at the door. All right, and then I'm gonna just sew this top together here. <laughs> my dogs are playing right by the door. Here we go, all right. I'm doing a 3 8 inch seam allowance on this top seam as well. Hi, sister. All right. Oh, yeah, that tag's cute. Look at how cute that is. I like it. All right, and then I'm going to just top stitch along the top here. Oh, that's cute. Look how cute that is. All right, and then I'm going to just base this around all four sides on the back and I'll be trimming up those corners and then we'll add our connectors. Super easy. And I'm going to baste it from the back side so I can get those corners on there. up. I did do Decaville light on all of my main panel pieces out of my seam allowances too, just FYI. All right. Super cool. That'll be my back slip pocket, most likely for, you know, phones and stuff. So let's go ahead and mark our centers on this piece and we will add our connectors. Here and here. Kind of fun not following a pattern, actually. <laughs> Just doing my own thing. 
All right. I'm just gonna baste this on the top. So when it's done, it'll be flipped up like that and that'll be my connector. And then I need to put these on. So I want them at a slant, right? Cause you want them to kind of go up. So I'll probably put this one here. Let's put them in the same spot though. I want them to be even. Mm, kind of freeing. Yeah, I'm having one of those days too. This is kind of what I need. And my day just started, okay. <laughs> we're gonna do an inch up from the bottom. So right where that curve ends, basically. All right, and then we're just gonna put it just at a little slant like that and baste it down. And then I'm making this so it can go on either side. So I'm doing two. For the gusset and the zipper panel, did you just measure the width and height of the main panel pieces? Uh, so I measured the entirety around it, the circumference, right? Isn't that what, it, what it's called? I measured the circumference around it. Brittany and Leslie helped me out with those calculations a little bit. I think I did it right. <laughs> so we'll see when it's all put together. All right, beautiful. There's my back panel. Look how cute and pretty that is. I know, math is hard for me too. I am not, I'm not great at math, but hopefully I did this right. All right, so let's do this. Yes, sheep, sheeple, yes. Kind of like quilting binding. Exactly. All right, so I am going to Put my centers real quick. And then I'm just putting on my label real quick. I think I want it down here actually down at the bottom. And we'll do an inch and a half. No, we'll go about right there. Yes. So, three point seven five, right? Seven and a half divided by two is three point seven five. Tell me yes. I think that's correct. Hello from Vienna. This is my own bag. I'm just kind of throwing one together. All right. Let's do this. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, I think that's correct. Thank you guys. Let's put this on here. I was debating to even put my name tag on it because it's so cute, but by itself, but I thought, no, I need to put my name tag on it. Here we go. All 
And then I'm gonna cover that with some tape. Awesome. Cute, cute, cute. So for this, I can go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and put my back panel on it because I'm binding and I'm not doing a pocket directly on the back of this one. I'm doing a zipper pocket on the back of the other one. So I gotta do the zipper pocket first before I attach it all. So let's go ahead and just baste these two layers together. And then we'll have that done. So I'm doing them right sides together, or no, wrong sides together, right sides out, sorry. <laughs> Let's get that a little smoother. Looks good. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and baste those two layers together here. Awesome. There is my front panel, back of it. Okay, I'll put that aside. Let's do our zipper. No, actually, let's do our zipper pocket first. Let's do our inside zipper pocket and then we'll work on our zipper panel. Here we go. All right. I'm just gonna draw a rectangle. I like to do an inch down, a half inch wide, and then an inch in on each side. It's just a good basic zipper pocket measurement, right? Very simple, just like that. It's just gonna be a, a baby one, but that's okay. That is okay, guys. And I gotta find my centers. This uh, material doesn't really crease very well, so I can't really, does it? No, not really. So I'm just going to clip it and mark it. Just joined. Um, I haven't seen it yet. We're going to see it on Wednesday with my kiddos. I just bought tickets to go watch it. They are very excited. Okay, so this is my middle. I need to sharpen this a bit more. Mm -mm. Nope, nope, nope. And then I'm gonna do it about an inch and a half down. Yeah. Inch and a half down. Here we go. I'll try and crease this piece. I think I can do it that way. Oh yeah, there we go. There's my middle. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to sew around this rectangle. <laughs> See these two layers just slip. So I've just gotta put my foot down. Perfect.
There we go. I'm gonna cut that open. And I don't think I can iron this material. I don't think it'll do much good. So I'll just kind of finger press it, which should work out just fine. Okay. And then this side here. Okay. And we'll turn it through. I didn't cut all the way through it. Come on. I think I need to change my blade. There we go. All right. So get this pulled to the back. Maybe we can iron it. Eh, let's try. Because that doesn't look very pretty. Let's try ironing. I don't know. I'll use a Teflon sheet. We'll see how it irons. I have no idea. Let's prep the zipper while I wait for my iron to heat up. Get a zipper pull out. Tape on, oh, new roll, where's the beginning? There it is. Is that the matte finish? Yes, it is, Charlie. It is the matte rainbow finish. It looks so awesome with purple and pink. It's kind of my favorite. I was debating between matte black and matte rainbow for this bag, and I decided, oh, why not rainbow? I know, me too. I just love it. It's so awesome. All right, let's put our zipper pull on here. All right, we're going to take this to the iron. Don't look how messy it is over here. And let's see if this cord reaches. All right, here's my iron. Let's try this. Pressed out to where we want it. I think that looks good. Let's see if this irons. I have no idea. I just have a big piece of wood for like a press pressing block. It works great. All right, yes, that's better. I'm gonna press this side too real quick. Sorry, my son was trying to call and it just lets him through since he's on my favorite. Whoops, down here. Hey, um, Susan, text David and tell him I'm on a live, will ya? Better, better. Taylor's iron, yeah. Thank you, Susan. I'm sure he's like walking to the gym or walking to work. He calls me every day. <laughs> it's one of the two. <laughs> okay, let's put in our zipper. Hello from Indiana, what am I making? I am making my own little bag, just my own little pattern. It's gonna be a sling that I just kind of put together myself. Yeah, my sons are kind of awesome. They always check up on their mom. 
All right. There we go. That was easy to put in. This material is kind of fun to work with. It's pretty easy. All right. Here we go. Let's just sew that in there. Uh huh. Did I put it on the wrong way? <sighs> okay. My zipper pull, eh, it's fine. It's going from right to left instead of left to right, but uh, it's okay. It's just an inside zipper. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna worry about it. Just, <laughs> that is so funny. I usually really play, pay close attention to that, but it'll be all right. not like this corner. My material is kind of slippery and my stitching doesn't look that great. I'm going to redo this corner. I don't love that. We're going to just take a couple stitches out. I'm not going to redo the whole thing. Just a couple. I usually pay better attention to zipper direction, but. But this will bother me. All right, let's redo that real quick. Here we go. Clappers, that's what they're called, huh? I'm just like, it's a quilt block, I don't know. All right, here we go. I'm just gonna start down here. Much better. Worth it. Yep. All right. Stitching looks better. I like that. Let's add. Let's add our back piece. This purple fabric is a bonded luxe nylon from Wonderground Fabric. And it's very silky smooth. And it has this like, I don't know how to explain the backing, but it's kind of very cool, especially for linings. I like it a lot. It gives you kind of a silky smooth lining. It's a little bit tricky to work with because it's a little slippery, but I think it's gonna be so amazing when the bag is all done. I'm gonna have to trim my pocket piece down just a little bit, which is totally fine. Yep, 
Yeah, I did a mail opening um, last week, I think, and Wonderground sent me some bonded Lux nylon, and I wasn't sure what it was called. It was at the beginning of the package, and then I realized I had already bought some as well, and that's what this is, so go check it out if you haven't. It's pretty cool. All right, I'm just going to trim down my sides a little bit because I don't want that in my seams. And it doesn't, um, it doesn't fray this bonded Lux. I could probably use this for my binding, actually. Huh. I probably could bind with it. It'd be a little slippery. But you probably could bind with it because it doesn't fray. All right. There is my zipper pocket. So I'm going to go ahead and baste that to my back panel, just like that. Wrong sides together, right sides out. All right, so let's baste those. And then we'll work on our zipper, zipper panel and gusset. I just want all this to line up. like that. Oh, that's just my iron. And see, there's my pocket. All good. All right. I'm going to baste those two layers together. Here we go. All right, let's make sure I got all, yes, looks good. Okay, love it. Let's move on to the zipper. Here we go. So here's my, I might be, <laughs> my zipper panel is going to be way too big. I can already tell because <laughs> it doesn't need that much. So I will most likely, I'm like, do I make this bigger or this smaller? I think I'll probably cut down my zipper panel quite a bit. Let's make it first and go from there. Do you have a suggestion for a machine that sews lighter weight fabric? My Juki 1181 eats lightweight fabric. Um, probably a semi-industrial uh, Juki is what I would go with. I My machine is awesome because it can do both lightweight and regular. I don't have that issue with this one. But I have that, I have heard that is an issue for some of those industrial jukies. All right, I'm just gonna baste this on first. I'm like, do I make it skinnier or do I make the gusset bigger? I'm not sure what I wanna do. I knew my measurements were, weren't correct for this, but that's okay. This is an easy fix.
All right, let me get my other piece for that. It's right here. On the other side. And then I'll do, I'm just doing a quarter inch seam allowance around my zipper panel. Because I don't want to change to a zipper foot. Mm -hmm. Here we go. And I haven't added my zipper pulls on yet for a reason. I'll add it when I'm done, just so I'm not fighting with them the whole time. But don't let me forget. <laughs> don't let me forget to add them. <sighs> And then I want to top stitch those two out. I will definitely have to trim down this zipper panel. Yeah, because just this finished is going to be three inches right here. That's three inches. Hmm. Let's see. It's going to be way too big. And then I'm like, mm, I have Decaville in here. So I don't really want that in my seams. I think I'm going to have to do a bigger... We're just going to make this a wider bag. Just a second while I heat up my press. Do I want it that thick? I don't know. I may cut this down just a tiny bit and then do just a little bit bigger gusset for it. Okay. This is just a pattern I came up with. I'm putting all the measurements. I'll put all the measurements I used for it in the description. So if you wanted to do it yourself, you can. All right, here we go. Hello, hello. Kathy, this is just a bag that I'm making myself. There's no published pattern for it except for me right now. All right. 
Here we go. I'm gonna go ahead and baste this layer all together. Let's see how much whiter it is than I had originally intended. Let's check this out. This is now about four inches wide. <laughs> so it's a whole inch off. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. Um, I could, let's see, if I cut an inch off, it would be there, which is fine. But again, I have that Decaville. because I don't think I want that wide of a gusset on it. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna cut this down and then maybe I can very carefully take some Decaville out of my seam allowance. Let's try that. There we go. Just an experiment here. So let's cut an inch, because then Hmm. Yep, let's do it. It won't be the end of the world if the deck of the light is in there, but I don't know. Hi, Anne, welcome. My blade isn't very... My blade isn't very sharp. I haven't changed this one in a while. All right, so now it's the correct width. So really you just need, what, an inch and a half on both sides and then the zipper in the middle. Would that be a better measurement? I think so. So now the question is, do I take off this Decaville or not? Might be okay. I wonder how hard this would be just to... Without cutting through the other layer. Let's see real quick. Yep, craft knife, lightly score... That's what I was thinking, Leslie. Is it worth it though? Could peel and replace the whole thing. Or I could just do it like that. Let's just try it. Um, Betsy, I got the printed vinyl from Wonderground. Don't do it. <laughs> I think I'm going to, though. <sighs> the knife is from, this one's from Becky uh, at Hannah Woodworking. I mean, if I just very lightly cut and peel, it's just fine. It's coming off. Look at that. It's beautiful. Let's do that. It's working. 
I'm very, you can kind of tell I'm only getting through the, I'm very lightly doing it and it's just cutting the decaville enough that I can peel it. Look at that. And it's not cutting through both layers. All right, that is possible to do guys. Cool. Learn something new every day, huh? Becky is killing it with her products. She's kind of amazing. Look at that. Ta-da. Did it. Looks great. Okay, I'm going to base that all together and put my poles on. <laughs> you can kind of feel it when you're scoring it. You can kind of feel how it's just cutting through your decaville. I would have had to press quite a bit harder to cut through both layers. All right, let's put my zipper pulls on. And then we'll connect the rest of the gusset. Bye, Rosie. Hi, Cynthia. There we go. There are my pulls. Let's put on my base. Here we go. So next time I do this bag, I'm just double checking my work here. Inch and a half, inch and a half. Yep. And then this is three. Maybe a little bit smaller than an inch and a half. Maybe one and a quarter, actually. One and a quarter, because it's still just a little bit. Look at that. It's just a tiny bit too big. It's going to bug me. Guys, I just have to trim it just a tiny bit more. I'm just doing like an eighth on each side. I have to stand. I can't cut sitting down. I gotta stand. Perfect. All right, I just cut an eighth of an inch off of one of the sides. I'm just gonna have to re-baste that down though. That's perfect. So I'm learning I need to reconfigure my zipper panels and how I do that. <laughs> That's fine. Because I kind of wanted one side, the front side, to be a skinnier than the back. Like I wanted the zipper to be more in the front, which it kind of is. But um, so next time I'll do even a smaller piece up front and a bigger piece in back. 
I think it'll work out great though. I need to go turn off my heat press that I turned on. Here we go. Put on our gusset. Now, as for if the gusset's gonna fit around my entire bag, I'm not sure yet, guys. I'm not sure. Let me go turn off my heat press. Okay, other side. Kind of curious, just a minute. Before I go any farther, let's just I mean, obviously it'll be up like this, but. I think it might fit. I think we're okay. All right, I think we're good. It looks like it's gonna fit. So let's just all hold our breath and cross our fingers. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna top stitch these two. this way exterior to exterior on the other side here where did you get your printed vinyl it's a wonderground print wonderground fabrics I'm basting this side first and then I will do full seam allowance with the lining side and it'll make it a whole loop. Nicole, yeah, this is just a pattern I came up with. I'll put measurements in the description when I'm all done. All right, here we go. There, flip her all out, top stitch, and then we'll attach all the pieces together. And then we're ready to bind, to attach and bind. can't wait for your video for the bee making box when will the video drop um so i think the 14th is when that video is supposed to drop i was gonna make it this week it's gonna be so awesome so the bee making box is a collaboration with wonderground i helped her pick out the pattern and the materials for this month and it is gonna be a good one if you haven't heard of it go check it out I am excited for it. I'm also doing another collaboration with another company for another box that's gonna be awesome. So stay tuned for that one. 
So many fun things coming up. All right, I'm just gonna baste these, this lining and exterior gusset piece together. And then we'll start putting it all together. It's uh, the bee making box is a wonder ground. Wonder ground fabrics, the same one that carries the vinyl and the Lux nylon. Cat, yes, so girly fun is the other box. It's going to be super awesome. Okay, so I'm gonna move you guys out. I'm not sure how to match up the gusset completely because it's not really a center, 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 center type thing because it's not a perfect square, right? So I may just have to work with it a little bit to find the side center pieces. Does that make sense? To where it all lines up. Um, Lala Palooza, I am using a bonded Lux nylon from Wonderground for my lining. All right. You guys. Are we good? Are we ready to put it all together? I think we are. Whoop, whoop. All right. So. As I said, I can't really mark my side centers because they're not gonna be centered, right? Like, at least I don't think, does that work out? I don't think it does. Because that, with my sides, mm, we can try it. I don't think it does though. I think it might be a little bit different, but we'll mark it. If it doesn't line up, then it doesn't line up. Mathematically, it doesn't make sense in my head, but maybe it does. Yeah, I'll definitely start at the top and bottom and kind of work it in from there. I'll mark all four centers on this gusset, but I don't think it's gonna be the same lining up on this panel. Okay, maybe it will. Here we go. I am binding, so mm, I want this one's a little bit smaller, so I want this one on the front. I like to unzip my zipper, and I'm gonna clip my centers first. These corners, I'm gonna have to clip quite a bit, and that is fine. I'm definitely glad I took that Decaville out of my seam allowance. It would have been really hard with it in there. Gosh, what am I gonna do if this doesn't line up? I'm gonna have to, if my gusset's too big, I'll have to cut a center seam and make it a little smaller. I have thought about this. I'm like, okay, what am I gonna do if that's the case? That's what I would do. Okay, so we'll see. I don't know if this is gonna line up. Marking my centers here and lining them up. All right, so, oh, that looks like it's actually perfect. So, yeah, line up all your centers, I guess. Cheryl, I was wondering what the fascination with jelly and see-through vinyl is about. Is there a reason for being able to see-through bags? Um, a lot of stadiums for concerts, 
don't allow you to have a regular bag. It has to be see-through. That's part of it. The other part is it's just fun to sew with. It's just easy. It is quick. I don't think, I mean, it's just fun. Oh, I feel like my gusset could be just a little bit smaller, guys. It'll work. It'll work. I would maybe, this is what I'd do. If I do this again, I'd keep the same measurements and do a bigger seam allowance right here instead of a quarter, maybe a three inch, three eighths inch seam allowance right here and here. And it would just maybe be just a tiny bit better on my piece. That's what I was worried about, but that's okay. It's still gonna, it fits actually pretty well. I'm pretty impressed with how it does fit. <laughs> I was a little worried about it. I think it'll be okay. But next time I would do a 3 8 inch seam allowance right there at my zipper panel gusset connection. Susan has been playing with her machine. We need to tell her to get on and do a video this week. I'm gonna use my stapler. I think in your head, it's because the zipper panel and bottom panel won't necessarily match the side notches, but that's okay. You aren't using that seam as your side match, yeah. It's actually working out okay, I think. I am gonna staple it, guys. It's just really gonna help with that not moving at all. What are the measurements for the connectors? So I did, um, I did three eight, or no, sorry, three fourths inch D rings on the bottom ones. So one and a half by three each for those connectors. And then for the top connector, I did a one inch D ring. So it was two by four for that measurement. actually fitting really nicely. I think we'll be okay. Ta-da. All right, let's sew around that. Let's do it. Hi, Brittany. Um, that stapler is amazing. That stapler is from Wawak or Waywak, and it is kind of fabulous. It's my new favorite. All right, so let's, I like to get over here for this part because my, it's kind of hard to see it the other way. So let's do over here and bring it in. All right, here we go, guys. Get my stiletto. I like to sew this way. Is the printed vinyl domestic machine friendly? I have no idea. Um, it feels pretty lightweight. I would think it is. It's not a very thick vinyl, but I haven't heard if other people have sewn on a domestic with it. So I can't 100% vouch for it yet on that front. Taking my corner slow, reworking that material as you go.
Hmm. Just trying really hard not to get wrinkles on those curves. It definitely needs to be a tiny bit smaller on my seam allowance, but that's okay for that gusset. I think we're gonna be okay. thing is too you're going to go around with binding after this as well and that will smooth it out even more oh yeah no cindy i don't have the skinny foot on my machine i did um try someone's skinny foot once at one of the sewing the states and it honestly wasn't my favorite i just don't feel like it pulled through the fabric like i needed it to so i've just kept with my regular sized foot yeah my guess it's definitely just a tiny bit too big guys But we made it work. Yeah, it's just a tiny bit, but I think we're gonna be good. All right, I'm gonna take out those staples and then we'll bind and then go to the other side. Yeah, skinny foot did not work for me on my walking foot machine. Yeah, I just don't feel like it. I don't know, guys. Maybe I'm just too used to my regular sized walking foot and I'm not patient enough, but I didn't really love the skinny foot. So there's that. Maybe I need to try it some more. See, made by Annie. She loves it. So <laughs> I'm guessing it has a lot to do with your machine and the materials you're using as well for that skinny foot. So, but I personally haven't bought one yet. So I can't really say if I like it on my machine or not because I haven't used one on my machine yet. All right, that's all my staples. If you guys use staples, you need one of these. These are from Amazon Staple Remover. They're on my list. They are kind of amazing when it comes to taking out staples on your bags. All right, we are good there. Let's put on my bonding. I'm just using this pre-made bias tape from Sailrite. I do think you could bind with this purple fabric, although I think it might be pretty slippery. 
I'm not sure. I did see that, was it Nancy from Fabric Therapy now has sticky bias tape where it's like self-adhesive. That seems kind of amazing. That might be worth a try. I don't know how that adhesive would work, you know, with your needle getting sticky. I'm not sure about that because I haven't used it yet. But I am interested to try that. These corners might be a little tricky to get around. There we go. Now again, if you want to match the color of your binding with your thread, you can change your thread, go for it. Not something that I really am picky about, so I'm just gonna stick with my pink thread. But if that bothers you, change your thread to match your binding. Sorry, kind of down here some more. This bag came together pretty dang quick. That's nice. What's the width of the binding tape? I think it's an inch. Yes, it is an inch. This tape is kind of thick. I wouldn't recommend it if you have a domestic machine. It is I mean, they do have different um, thicknesses though on the Cellrite website. So they do have thinner stuff. Is binding hard to learn on bags? Susan, no, it's not. Some people love it, some people hate it. But for a bag like this, it just gives it when it's all done for this shape, it's gonna like help the seams and help the shape of the bag. Um, I don't think binding is easier than birthing. I think they're kind of the same because both of them do take a little bit of time. I don't think one's quicker than the other. I don't know. I like the shape it gives the bag. You're pretty much just covering, you're just covering your seam. You're covering your seam and you're sewing around it. That's all you're doing. You just don't want that raw edge seam. And then you're giving it a little extra structure with your binding. Hopefully that makes sense. My corners are a little sharp, so it's a little hard because this bias tape isn't, it's not me, it's not cut on the bias, it's a canvas. So it doesn't have a stretch to it. So it doesn't curve around that corner like actual bias tape will. You can use double-sided or double-folded elastic as well if you really want that curve, which I need to try more double-sided elastic, I think. I think that would be a game changer as well. Okay, done. Hi, Kaylee. Hi, Keith. All right. I'm gonna just, this tripod foot's in the way. There we go, here we go. Let's sew this on. Does that Lux nylon have glitter in it? No, but it's shiny. So it kind of looks glittery. It's kind of cool. It's just shiny. All right. 
right, here we go. Yeah, binding is a practice thing, but I feel like so is birthing bags. I think it's all kind of similar. and I made my first bag with binding this weekend and it wasn't as scary as I thought it would be. Oh, I'm so glad. It really isn't. I know Leslie of Jolie Lee Creations was kind of scared to do binding for quite a while. Was it Leslie or was it Annette? One of you. And when you finally did it, you kind of hated it and then you practice more and now you're, you're fine with it. So, yeah. Just like anything, it just takes a little practice. Leslie is a binding queen. Well, now she is, Karen. She hated it when she first started. She said, I don't understand how you guys do this. <laughs> Right, Leslie? Yeah, it was you. <laughs> uh, all right. All right, now I just gotta make sure I caught the back. I missed right here around this corner, which the corners are just pretty sharp on this bag, so I'm not surprised, but that's the only part I missed. So I'm just coming from the back side. Make sure you tack that down right there. And that's it. Let's see this real quick. All right, so there's my, see it's not perfect. It's also the inside of the bag. So that's okay. I'm just gonna squish it out real quick. Let's see what we have on our corners. It's looking pretty good, I think. Yep. Okay. There's the front of our bag. Huh. Cute. Inside. All right. I'm going to go ahead and put on the back now. Let's do it. What a cute little bag. Look how cute it's just this little, it's just gonna be this little guy. I like it. All right, let's turn it back out. Here we go. I don't think I have my, I have my top, but that's it. So let's clip our centers real quick. I need a drink too, water. I thought you were all mon monsters for loving it. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> so this back section's a little bit thicker, so it might be a little trickier, but we can do it. All right. Okay. Hmm. 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 Here we go. My hands are about done. Let's get some more clips in here. And clippity clip. I 
I'm excited. Uh, this kind of worked out to what I wanted it to be. Whoop, whoop. Are you keeping this one for yourself? You know what, Brittany? I don't think so. I think I'm going to sell this one. So if anybody's interested, it'll be on my website later today if you want to buy it. Oh, am I doing this right? Yeah, I am. Okay. <laughs> I thought for a minute. I'm doing this backwards. I'm not. Oh, I do need to trim off. All oh, my clips are falling. My connector's right there. All right. That's pretty cool. So the only changes I would have to make next time is the zipper panel width and the seam allowance on my gusset or just make a smaller in length gusset, but not by much. So that's pretty dang good for my first time around with this, <laughs> considering I didn't sew up a practice bag. I think we're doing good. All right. Definitely needs staples because this side's just a little bit harder with all those layers. Okay, here we go. Hi, Allie. You girls just sitting at home watching this? <laughs> all right. Here we go. Uh, let's do some clips. Oh my guess it. And we'll do some staples. looks like a lunchbox. <laughs> That's what it reminds me of. It reminds me of a lunchbox. A cute lunchbox, but that's what it kind of reminds me of. All right, let's get these staples in there. Here we go. Kind of down on that one. That one's okay. All right, here we go. Next layer. Next corner. Hi, Monica. All right, and down here. Don't think a staple will go through that whole connector area here. My clip barely fits it. All right, last side. Do all your girls have enough bags? <laughs> yeah, and I don't think my, I know my 17 year old would not dig this Barbie bag. And Charlotte has so many of my bags. She doesn't need another one. So that's why I'm not, I'm not really going to keep this one. I think it's adorable and I freaking love it, but I don't need to keep it. I can sell this one. All right. All my corner staples. Let's do this. I'm getting hungry, guys. Perfect timing. Almost time for lunch. All right, let's start. A girl can never have enough bags. I mean, that's true. <laughs> I did make myself, well, I am making myself another Louis waste bag. 
this weekend I made a total of four. I was on a roll. So, all right, here we go. Here we go, here we go, here we go again. Or shoes, 100%. Susan, we used to have the Barbie and the rocker set complete with stage and musical instruments. It was pretty epic. Yes, it was. <laughs> My favorite thing to play with as a kid. This is true. I forced Susan to play Barbies with me a lot, and she forced me to play sports with her a lot. It was a give and take type of relationship. <laughs> it worked out perfectly. <laughs> Now you guys are epic in a different way. <laughs> Dear sweet Charlie. All right. Hello from Bangladesh. I always want to say your name, but I'm afraid I'm going to butcher it. I don't want to mess it up. staples we're almost there home stretch Susan hates it when I say that she's like it's not almost done you're lying <laughs> All right. let's take these out that's it there Only an hour to go. <laughs> no, I'm serious. We're almost done, guys. Like, we're almost there. I do have a Louis waste bag I need to finish that I could keep sewing if I wanted. If you guys wanted to stay longer and hang out. <laughs> hmm. I've got all the pieces put together. I just need to do the final assembly of it. And it's for me. She lies. <laughs> I do, Susan. I lie. I'm a liar. All right. All right, Heidi, you're sweet. She says we always want to hang out. Thank you. Okay.
here we go. Let's bind it up. gonna be so cute. All right, here we go. Hi, Jade. Hello, hello. You need chocolate, Heidi. That's always the case. Always. I went to the farmer's market yesterday and I got some fresh, yummy, yummy peaches and some pasta, some like flavored pasta. And I grilled some chicken and cooked up pasta last night and it was so good. So I think I'll have that for lunch. I have leftovers. And just thinking about it is making my mouth water. <laughs> oh, and I got spicy bread and butter pickles. Oh, love pickles, guys. So good. Yeah, it was just me at home yesterday all alone. My kids were at their dad's and my older daughter was in or is in California looking at colleges because she thinks she wants to be a California girl. <laughs> um, so it was a rare all alone type of night and I cooked a yummy meal. I took a bath. It was kind of nice. And I sewed. I made those Louis bags for friends. So yeah, that was good. Now I just need to finish mine. Okay. All clipped on. I'm gonna check my bobbin real quick because I haven't done that. So let's just make sure that we're good on bobbin. I think I'm just going to put in a bigger one so I don't run out. This one has a little bit more. That's raspberry beret. And I'm gonna have to take that one off. Just a second. You should make your own pickles. Uh, I, I would if I had extra time. <laughs> I do not have extra time. My bobbin always winds too much. Dang it. All right, here we go. Where's my bobbin case? There it is. I made, as Susan said, I made some pencil pouches Today I'm trying to finish the Southeast travel pack, but clipping the gusset to the panels has me a little stumped, trying to get it to fit. Uh, yeah, Susan, that, that one's a little tricky. You kind of have to do a fold in it. Um, Leslie and I sewed those up on a live. You should go kind of watch that and fast forward to that part. It might help. That one's a little tricky on the corners. Hi, Shinova. Okie dokes. Let's finish it. Woo woo. Here we go. I'm sure Missy thinks I'm crazy. She's out there 
fill in orders. I can't imagine what I sound like in here. <laughs> All right, here we go. Thank you, Leslie. That would be awesome if you helped her out. You should come here and clip it for me. I'll feed you and do your laundry. <laughs> I was debating, Susan. I'm like, what's my next free weekend? I'll just drive down to Susan's house for a couple days. back oh just right here in this corner let me just catch this it's always there's always one there's always a corner all right that's it we got her done let's see what we get Turn this out. Ready? Cute. It's cute. Ta da! It is okay. So it's skinny. 
It's not very fat because I had thought it would be, you know, kind of a smaller bag since it is a sling. So you could definitely go a little wider on the gusset if you wanted to. But there is our Barbie bag. <laughs> Should I, you know what, I'll do the strap real quick so we can get the full effect. Let me put the strap together. I think I have all of this stuff, but it turned out guys. Oh, isn't that cute? <laughs> I'll make sure, I'll make sure I put all of the uh, measurements for this down in the description so you guys can replicate if you want. Make sure you post pictures on my Facebook group so I can look at your creations. But seriously, that turned out so cute. Let me make the strap real quick. Let me make the strap real quick so we can try it on. Okay. So let's finish the strap. I have got all of my pieces over here. I'm just gonna keep you there. Let's do it real fast. I like the skinny better for that type of bag. Yeah, I agree. If it was gonna be like a crossbody bag with a strap, I think I would have gone wider, but because I'm doing it as a sling, I kind of like the thinner better. Okay. Let's see. Let's go about, I think, 40. 45 is usually the sweet spot for me for straps. Let's do that. I'm going to have my stuff here. I love webbing, guys. Isn't webbing just the best creation ever? <laughs> the fact that I don't, don't have to really sit here and fully put together this, it's kind of amazing. All right, here we go. Let's... Oh, I need to melt my ends. Let me melt my ends real quick. I, like, melt be so good because they tend to unravel if you don't so make sure you melt them really good you'll kind of see it go you can tell okay so put on my slide first I'm gonna do two rows of stitching on this that's what I've been doing all right. Yeah, webbing is great because you can. You can swap it out for different colors of straps. I've been telling my friends with the straps I'm making them, if you want just a plain one, let me know and I'll just make you two different straps. It's not a big deal. Yeah, it's kind of awesome. I don't love putting rivets through webbing. I feel like the possibility of it fraying is there. So I'm just gonna do two rows of stitching. Hi, Carol. All right, and then I'm just gonna make sure I get these threads all melted. Okay, see, I just did, just did two rows of stitching there. All right, so let's put on our clips. Here's one, down, up, and over. Just like that, okay, strap, slider, and then we put our other, there it is. I'm like, where's my other hook? Hmm. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. I'm just gonna do two. Um, the webbing is one and a half inches wide. And I cut it 45 inches long. 
I feel like a lot of patterns call for 54 and for me, that's too long. You could make also, the option is there to make the end of this webbing all cute and cover it with a cute piece of vinyl or leather. That's totally an option as well. If you don't like just the raw end webbing. put our strap on our bag and I will try it on. All right. Sorry for the light in the back. Here we go. Which way do I like to wear mine? I don't remember. This way? Sure. Tighten it a little bit. Ta-da! <laughs> that turned out super cute. Oh wait, let's do it along the back this way. Oh, this takes me a minute to think of how to do it. Oh, this way. There. Look how cute that is. <gasps> Yay. There is my Barbie bag. All done. Sorry, that took me a minute. <laughs> okay, all done. I like the size a lot. That is really cute. That turned out cute. There we go. This cutie is going to be for sale on my website if you're like, that needs to be mine. Um, and then I will make sure I put all of my supplies, links for all of that down in the description and all the measurements so you can make this bag up too if you want it. I'll even put the link for the embroidery design that I got off of Etsy if you're curious about that. And I guess that's it. All right, guys, thanks for joining me. I hope you guys have a fabulous Monday. I hope you have a great week. And thank you so much for watching. Okay, we'll see you next time. Bye.